So it looks conventional until you realise there's no exhaust, just a big, nice, big space here. Although, if you look down in front of the rear wheel, you can see the electric motor the goat with its golden fins. While we're at the back of the bike, you can see this on-road package, which uh, it looks a bit odd because it's so divorced from the rest of the bike, but the reason it has to be back here is because the EU regulations stipulate that it, the light and the number plate must be beyond the back of the rear wheel. So if you just tack it onto the back of the seat then it's not strictly speaking legal although of course that's what a lot of people do um, and of course that does mean that this whole package is going to be going up and down with every bump of the rear wheel but we'll see how it stands up to that when we get on the trails um, we've got some nice chunky footrests um, the forks are small you know, you could say, well, some mountain bikes have got forks as big as that these days, which they probably have. Um, fat bars. My first impression when I had a quick go earlier on was that the bars felt a bit low when I was standing up. I'll see how I feel after doing a bit more trail riding. If we turn it on... Uh, we won't do that. We'll do that later. We'll come to that in a second. Got nice little... Of course, the... Uh, no clutch, of course, it's just twist and go. So that's the rear brake, not the clutch. Front brake, just neat little controls. The, um, of course, the thing that's missing, if we take the key, uh, and there's a big hole where the battery should be because we've got it inside on charge. Uh, because we want to make sure we start today with 100% charge of my little spin earlier on ran it down a bit but of course that's a really really useful thing that if you live in a flat or you haven't even if you've got a garage but no power in it you can just take the um, take the battery out and charge it next to your TV your washing machine or your, your laptop whatever wherever you've got a socket basically okay so there's just conventional wind up and down adjustment here on the on the spring and uh, it's on well for my bulk it's feeling pretty soft um, but uh, yeah for a lightweight rider it, it'd be great on the forks we can add a bit of preload and on the right a bit of rebound we'll just do that for now and again we'll see how it performs on the trail it was fine earlier on on the road and uh, obviously it's when you start hitting bigger bumps is when the suspension really starts to matter. Oh, and here, this is a, the magic button, the all-important button that takes you from 28 mile an hour moped to a 45 mile an hour much more lively beast altogether. But of course that does use up the battery faster, like any electric, well, like any machine, whether it's petrol or electric, if you're if you're going faster and using more energy, you will get use it faster. That's the fun button. The fun button, yeah. <laughs> it's not outrageously heavy at all, you know. There's no reason why a young lady couldn't carry this up a flight of stairs if she if she had to. So I'm gonna slot it in. Oh, it'd be good to get it right way around, that's the first thing. It's quite a tight fit. I think that's right. That obviously, orange to orange. Go one way, I presume, and then clip that down. Of course, you don't you don't have to remove the battery to charge it. You can charge it in situ. The um, that's still very much accessible. The charging socket on the battery at the top of the battery, and also. 
one important point. But that's it. There's also a little button here on the top, so you can press that button and it tells you you got 100%. Hurrah! Now we've got it's like a it's like a domestic fuse switch. Now we're on. Shut the lid. Put the key in ignition. Hurrah! And it also tells us on the dash that we've got 100%, which is reassuring that the dash agrees with the battery itself. And it even says, ready.